I was called in by a CPS investigator and I was judged, tried, and convicted uh, in her mind as being extremely guilty before I even arrived at the uh, Collin County CPS office. I tried to explain to her uh, that, again, we have been in a long uh, battle. Um, for eight months, we had been, uh, my ex-wife and I had been uh, engaged in a uh, highly contentious divorce and custody battle, and that this was a false allegation. Uh, unfortunately, they did not believe me, and I was falsely, or I was um, charged with uh, sexual improprieties with my son. It cost me my teaching, my temporary, uh, my teaching position, as well as my freedom. I was denied access to my son uh, for over four months, despite my attempts to explain and express to uh, CPS that there was a wide variety of brainwashing activities going on by his mother. CPS investigated me for 12 months. It took three court trials to be able to finally earn full visitation with my son. Each time, CPS pushed that I would not be allowed to have any visitation with my son in the name of erring on the side of caution. In one particular hearing, the judge even stated that he had heard multiple allegations against me, but yet was never provided any real evidence to support the claims. How old was your son at the time? He was six. And he was interviewed by CPS three times. I frequently reported to CPS that my ex-wife was brainwashing him, that she was engaged in parental alienation or uh, pathogenic parenting. For 12 months, CPS refused to believe me. She had a bachelor's degree and experience as a police officer. She had a master's degree in clinical psychology. She had a PhD in criminology and taught courses at the University of Texas at Dallas in victimology, yet none of that made any difference to CPS and their investigation. For 12 months, CPS believed me to be a danger to my son. They only changed their mind when, after a week-long jury trial, um, they, uh, the sole custody of my son was awarded to me and she was stripped of her parental rights. And after that, she was allowed to go home and she shot my son and then shot herself. Only then did CPS begin to believe that maybe she, not I, might have been the problem. I asked, no, I beg, that as CPS is looking to reevaluate how they are taught to include the role that they can play in highly contentious child custody battles, how that she was able to manipulate them to believing her and not seeing the true evidence that many other medical professionals did see. Parental alienation, pathogenic parenting, hostile aggressive parenting, whatever you might want to call it, is real and CPS plays a big role in the front lines of protecting children. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very sorry to hear you story in your loss, uh, your son, I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, just so I understand maybe the context within which to, to receive your testimony, is it your opinion that your experience was, uh, you know, unique or, or somehow really the, the result of a overly aggressive office or the policy of the office in your backyard, or do you think it's more systematic with within CPS. I mean, are you testifying today and is it your opinion that there's a, a agency problem or is it a problem maybe with a rogue caseworker or somebody that's overly aggressive? I mean, I'm just trying to understand what you're... What yes, your sir. Is. Five years ago, I would have said, yes, it was a unique situation. Since then, I have discovered that, no, this is a systematic problem that it is, as I have talked with people all over the state, 
They frequently, CPS is called, they do not understand the issues that are associated with parental alienation, the signs, the symptoms, and frequently jump to the wrong conclusion and do not want to fully appreciate that there might be a lot more going on than that they were willing to understand. And again, a lack of understanding, a lack of education, uh, training and exposure to uh, the symptoms, the signs, the causes of parental alienation. 